Folks, Saturday night, welcome aboard. It's time for the Calamity Campaign. Only we ain't playing that because we had a couple people back out. So we're going to do a one shot. Unfortunately, Kevin was around to go ahead and jump in the seat. Uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, we're going to have you for about two hours if you stick with us. See if we can make you laugh, make you cry, make you say, holy shit, these guys are stupid. But uh, uh, let's get the rigmarole out of the way. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like a phone case, a throw pillow, a uh, duvet cover, uh, skateboard stickers, bullshit like that, the link is down below. Most importantly, if you, like Kevin, uh, want to join in on a one-shot either next Saturday, because we're, we're sticking with the schedule, or on Tuesday for the talk show, uh, hit us up, mhobo inc, Twitter, or Gmail. Uh, we'll get you on there and do people get pushed to the front uh, as best we can. Uh, so there's that, you know, uh, you can be uh, with a classy new group of friends like us, ish, classy ish. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, of course, Pirate Dog Dice, for dice that don't roll shitty. Uh, if you're looking for some custom dice, hit them up on Twitter, at Pirate Dog Dice. And of course, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like success and experience, uh, go to <laughs> oddfishgames.com, get yourself a little adventure sense. Hmm, a uh, pirate ship smells like charcoal and burning death. Ah, uh, but it's still better than putrid sewers. So check out oddfishgames.com. Also, they make the shine system. So if you want to be an accomplished writer like moi, only write gooder, uh, check out their shine system, oddfishgames.com. Uh, also, most importantly, if you're going to Gen Con and you've got a few down hours, Oddfish Games could really use some booth help. They're willing to pay moolah or uh, in stuff. So if you want, hit them up, oddfishgames.com. Tell them you'd be happy to go ahead and help them out at uh, their booth if you're going to Gen Con. Uh, other than that, uh, this was supposed to be Calamity. It is not. It is a one-shot. Let's introduce you to the people who are going to make you laugh, cry, and just generally shake your head at them. We'll start at the bottom of my screen. Uh, David, David, who are you? Who are you playing? Hi, I'm David. I'm one of the two Calamity guys that showed up tonight. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I am David. I play Yngwie on the Calamity Campaign, also Crow on the B-side of the Calamity Campaign. And you also might recognize me as Zadar from the Cacophony <laughs> soap opera. I keep Soon to be second. ending. Soon to be ending Cacophony. Oh, yeah, we're wrapping things I've up. I've heard that before. Making me oh, yeah. sad. Yeah, I'm, I'm really going to miss, miss this bunch. Anyway. Whatever. Uh yes, yeah, so I'm also on the Tuesday the night. <laughs> That's it. You can always visit revisit in the archives. Um anyway, yeah, what I was saying. Yes, I'm also on BTR most of the time. So uh yeah. Anyway, that's me. I'm Dave. Tonight I'll be playing Valiant. The, <laughs> the Paladin. <laughs> Frank's just like eh. <laughs> Every time you say BTR, I think BTK. BTK. Yes. Yeah. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, wee, wee, wee. There, there's a metal now. band here called BTK. So oh, it's great. like, uh. <laughs> nice. I, I love paladins. They're great. They're bloody wankas. Uh, next Wanka! up is Kevin. <laughs> this is number two for Kevin. One more, and he gets some cool ass swag. Kevin, who are you? Who are you playing tonight? Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm a gamer, of course. I am the host and the Game Master for the Game Night Heroes podcast. And tonight mm -hmm. I'm just excited to be playing Trevor Quincy, who is a former archaeologist who found some ruins he wasn't supposed to get into and now has binded himself with Sune, the goddess of love and beauty and passion, which fits him because he is super hot as we'll find out <laughs> thirsty <laughs> cleric nice. here we go <laughs> thirsty, thirsty cleric thirsty yeah. saturdays ah uh, when <laughs> and where can we hit your podcast we come out every tuesday we're on all the different streams and everything you can find us at game night heroes.com and uh on anchors our main hub but we are everywhere right now we're just happy to be around there you go folks so nice. if you don't want to watch us on uh btr bind torture Ruin. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. In his group. Uh, next up is Rob. Rob, same questions, different answers. Oh, good. Uh, I'm Rob, and I'm the other Calamity guy that showed up. Um, 
I play uh, Dave on Calamity A, which is what we should have been playing tonight. And I play Brother Cup on Calamity B, which is what we were going to be playing tonight. And tonight I'll be playing Mist on whatever this is that we're going to be playing tonight. <laughs> I'm a tabaxi rogue. A whole lot of bitching is what I'm hearing. Last but certainly not least, <laughs> always behind the camera. Also tonight she's in front of the camera. My wife, Carrie. Carrie, who are you? Who are you playing? Hi, I'm <laughs> Carrie. I'm married to this guy over here, which has roped me into all this. Uh, tonight, and this is a character that he created for me, is I'm playing a druid, human, named Moonbeam Love Child, nice. which she despises. She hates that her parents named her that, so she prefers to be called M. And her goddess, or her deity, is the Morrigan, a Celtic goddess of war. Nice. Nice. Like what's that. your what's your favorite spell? We're <laughs> <laughs> uh, not talking Wounds. about that right now. Uh, bark something. Uh, yeah. Folks at home, uh, if you've uh, if if you're a long time watcher, just to let you know, I'm drinking the Bahama Mamas tonight, so you know that always increases the creativity. But tonight, these guys are third level. Uh, they've been out on the frontier. They've been dicking around. Uh, they got some experience under their belt, and uh, now it's uh, time for a little R R and T rest, relaxation, and training. They are close to the city of Fidum, a kind of uh, religious Jerusalem esque, if you will. Yes. Uh, Steve's running loose in the backyard. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the mother-in-law has a He'll, he'll uh, oh, he's, Steve. He's, he's fine. Yeah, he's, he's got tags on. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> this uh, city they're headed to is Fidum. Uh, think of the Italian Riviera. Nice little coastal town nestled in some nice mountains. Uh, major supplier of pomegranates and religious <coughs> zealots. Uh, which you are about to find out. Uh, as you guys start the journey to fight them on day four, the morning of, uh, you're going to be taking a mountain pass. Who wants to lead? Uh, and or scout. Uh, lead, lead on the trail. The trail is well-worn. Uh, this area is not the boondocks. This area is a major trading point, even though it is uh, a smaller town. Uh, but the road is wide. It has... Uh, divots in it from the uh wagon wheels <laughs> oh, that dog is fast and wagon <laughs> wheels i keep thinking of the you know for, time for timer time for it wagon wheels. they aren't mayans david so you know. <laughs> uh so anyway uh you guys are headed along who is in the lead i'll take point go uh the tabaxi mo or tabaxi rogue uh leads on Go ahead and give me a perception check as you tootle your way down the trail. Na, 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 na. Uh, that's a 15. Uh, you stop short. Who's number two? I'll be second. Moonbeam Love Child is second. Uh, give me a strength roll, please. Oh, Lord. Let's oh. see if you bump mist in. Two. <laughs> Ah, very nice. Oh my! Uh, Mist, your strong haunches keep Moonbeam uh, <laughs> back as you survey the landscape. Cutting across the trail is a fissure, for lack of a better term. Uh, it's only three feet wide, but as you look to the left and you look to the right, uh, it scales up the mountain and down the mountain towards the coast uh, for no particular reason. There's no steam. Uh, there's no escaping gases. It just seems as though this fissure has broken through the trail. Uh, a quick jump uh, should suffice and allow you to be on your way unless you'd like to uh, take a gander at this. I, I'd like to look before leaping. Sure. Uh, you look down and uh, you know a little droplet of spittle extends down and drops. Who is spitting? and drops and drops and now you're beginning to think that maybe my spit did not have enough density to go ahead and make any noise but it seems as though uh, it's at least outside of your dark vision radius now, deep, deep, deep 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 
Yeah, keeping oh. in mind it is morning, so your dark vision is not going to be pristine. Uh, a lot of sunlight here as the uh, green, lush growth. Uh, like it. Enjoys the sun. Um, but yeah, well, yeah, I'll jump this. across then. Sure. Give me uh, acrobatics. Easy okay. peasy. Um, 16 plus whatever the hell it is. Uh, six, 22. Uh, Mist uh, notifies you guys of this cravat. Uh, leaps over. I mean, it's yeah. it, it, It's really just a minor opening here. Uh, on the far side, Mist, uh, you feel terra firma below. Uh, no indication that you're going to go into a slip and slide activity. Uh, Moonbeam, you were second, but do you, Quincy, or Valiant want to make the leap next? I'm going to watch that crevasse when they jump over it, just sure. in case. Give me an investigation uh, check. I don't trust fissures. <clears throat> uh, that, one's live, a, my friend. that one's a 17. Okay. Quincy, were you going second? I can go back him. That's fine. Yes. Uh, 17. Yeah. Uh, much like mist. Leap over, no problem. Uh, Mist, you, you thought you saw something moving, but uh, it's probably just the early morning uh, fragrance is getting to you. Uh, a lot of nasal passage issues. Uh, maybe uh, I'll pollen. just keep my longbow at hand in case. <laughs> sure. Is there mint uh, growing wild around here or something? Oh, I'm sure there is. Hazel, Cat nut or what? something. Yeah. Uh, Moonbeam or Valiant, who's up next? I'll go. Uh, what are we doing? Acrobatics? Yep. And to do 20. Nice. Easy. I mean, a high leap, good landing, no problem, except everybody roll initiative. Oh, uh -oh here we go. Very well. 11. Uh, 16. My... I've got the big fat plus zero, so that's going to be a six. Uh, 13 for Valiant, but he's on the other side of the crevasse at the moment. He is, and uh, he is on the high ground, so he will not see this coming mist uh, as Moonbeam makes her leap. You notice uh, movement. Some kind of uh, spherical body comes up, uh, and it also got a 16 as it reaches up with its mouth tentacles to try and touch Moonbeam as she makes her leap. It appears as though this creature is an arcana check please everybody oh uh 14 about to sprout an arrow is eight <laughs> just thinks it is <laughs> i've got an 11 uh 19 for value 19 you will know what it is uh as soon as you see it mist i'll let you go first you and i did tie as uh several tentacles rise up out of the crevasse Looks like it's going to try and touch Moonbeam on the leg. I'm going to try and uh, 23 to hit. Does not hit. Damn. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm kidding. Of course, the fuck. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say. Oh, you guys are third I was like, holy sake. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of shit to do. Shit. I figured this is a half hour game. You guys are all going to die. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the entire group got uh, real puckered up there for a second. It's, it's yeah, we nine, did. <laughs> nine points like, piercing whoosh. damage then. Nine points. Nicely done. As the tentacles uh, rise up from the crevasse, it reaches out to grab Moonbeam by the boot. Uh, 12 plus 4, 16. Uh oh. I know that look. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Give me a constitution save, please. Shit. Oh, fuck. Uh... Ow! Uh, the tentacle <laughs> reaches up and smacks at your boot. A surge of strange sensations passes through you. You take four hit points uh, and you feel very lightheaded and crash to the ground, paralyzed. Uh, Quincy. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, not Quincy. Uh, Valiant with a 13. Okay. Uh, you're up. Uh, hey, that looks like a carrion crawler. That does. And so yeah. Valiant breaks out his uh, his eagle-headed he maul 
He's going to try to How long down. is your eagle headed maul? Uh, let's see. What's the standard length on a maul? Two handed maul? <laughs> About five feet. I, I'm going to say feet, so two ten feet, feet and 11 inches. <laughs> yeah, well. that's it. No, so that would make his reach about 10 feet. So Okay, yeah, you can swing. Uh, but if you roll the one, your mall's going into the crevasse yeah. instead of hitting somebody. <laughs> I'll take it as much. <laughs> the gods will favor you. Roll anyway. Roll anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. That would be an 18 to hit. 18 does hit. Okay. All right. So. All right. Uh Yes, see, that is 11 points, bludgeoning damage. Nicely done. Uh, the 11 is up next. Moonbeam, uh, d12 against me to start. Yeah. A two. A seven. You do not strike a rock as you go, un, uh, well, go paralyzed. Uh, you may, at the end of your turn, reroll your constitution check to see if you are unparalyzed. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I hate being paralyzed. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> Eight. Oh. Eight, still paralyzed. Uh, Quincy, all hell has broken loose. This cephalopod looking creature is out. One of your constituents is on the ground. One of them is swinging a giant club like he's in a Scottish prison cell or something and the other <laughs> one is peppering it with arrows so what do you want to do with this thing you are on the correct side excellent well i'm going to make my way over to moonbeam love child i'm going to crouch down next to her and i'm going to cast lesser restoration to remove her paralysis very nice thank you uh, but call me up, M. <laughs> up of the order uh misc you and i have tied i'll let you go first uh um uh, mm. Please be a one. Uh, yeah! One. <laughs> that was a one. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see. Odd, your bowstring snaps. Or hold, hold on. D6, one, one to two, your bowstring snaps. Two to three, you shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, or I'm sorry, three to four, you shoot yourself in the foot. Five to six, you shoot Valiant in the face. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> Ooh, it's going wow. high. Okay. Six. Boom! <laughs> hey, Darth um, Maul, you just got hit in the face. <laughs> so uh, I, I rolled. Chink. <laughs> would have been six piercing damage, so it should be three. Three uh, piercing damage for friendly fire in the home game. Uh, I got three choices over there now that. Just like a cheek piercing, man. You can live with it. Uh, one to two missed. Uh, me rugged, three to good four Moonbeam and five to six Quincy. Mm -hmm. uh, fresh on your failure, Mist, uh, its tentacles reach out. Ooh, that's a 19 plus 4. <laughs> Give me that con that, save. That definitely, definitely, definitely hits. Uh, that con save is uh, plus 3, uh, 16. Uh, you save, but you take six hit points of damage as that thing uh -huh. rushes out uh -huh. at you. Uh, Valiant, uh, with an arrow still notched in your... Or, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no, you're right. Hmm. 13, yeah. Uh, so, Valiant, you have an arrow in your face. I'm like... <laughs> Actually, oh, you know what? Miss. It's hanging out of your ear. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Okay. I, always, man, I was considering an earring anyway, so there we go. And now it's a gauge. <laughs> yeah, now it's a gauge. <laughs> can get one eagle shaped or something like that so there we go all right keep so, in mind that natural one goes into the crevice if you choke yeah i know i know oh don't <laughs> choke don't choke don't worry i already got a natural one <laughs> that's it we're safe now that's it <laughs> we're all the ones are rolled uh yeah 13 to hit 13 does hit okay all right and let's see um Okay, that is 11, but I'm going to expel a, a, a spell slot and hit it with a Divine Smite. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's an extra D8. Uh, three more points of Radiant Damage. 
Nicely done. Uh, Moonbeam, who are you? Why are you here? You've been nominated to be a vice president. What would you like to do? <laughs> um, so I can produce flame, so I'd like to try to throw some flame at it. Burn it! Burn <laughs> it! Throw the fire! Oh. <laughs> Don't have <it>. cease back. <laughs> yeah, but Steve made it back in. Damn it. Uh, eight. Well, that's going to be boom, nearly hitting Valiant uh, Sorry. as you start to get up. You do the old underarm, pew, and you miss. Uh, Quincy, this thing's still got a lot of life left in it. What do you want to do? Because indeed, I am going to gesture, and I pull out a small pocket mirror out of my platoon. No, my platoon. What's, what's the word more? My pants. Whatever. Pantaloons. Oh, we'll be fancy. Pantaloons. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Whatever that might be. <laughs> I pull out a small bag. mirror, and I cast Guiding Bolt. There is a streak of light that comes out of the mirror and flies towards the carrion crawler. I need to make a ranged spell attack. Please miss. Please miss. <laughs> oh, I certainly did with a big fat seven. Eight. <laughs> Valiant, everybody is currently aiming at you. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. There, there might have been some talk in green room when you stepped away. I'm just saying. Yeah, probably. <laughs> top, of, <laughs> top of round three missed. You and I tied. Bring it. Uh, that's a ridiculous number to hit, 23. And, now, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> who, who are you aiming at? The centipede thingy thing. Okay, just check. Carrying crawler, sorry. Wanted Wait, to make sure. Parted. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I'll let you know if I'm going to kill any party members. Sure. Uh, but that's max damage with uh, 12 points of piercing damage. Oh, yeah. It really looks bad. Not bad enough to die. It's not the first time I've fought one of these. A five. Quincy, it does not appreciate your guiding bolt. It scurries up and out of the gorge and attempts to strike you with its tentacles. All right. 13 plus 4, 17? That certainly will hit me. Um, save, please. Oh, my. Here we go. Six damage to you as well. All right. Well, the save is going to be a 17. Safe. Uh, Valiant. Uh, the creature is well in view now, you can probably hit it in its rectum. So, <laughs> rectum nearly Damn killed, near him. killed him. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, uh, 17 to hit. Hits. All right, and let's see, 2d6. Oh. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage. That is enough to cripple it and make it roll over on its belly. Uh, Mist, Moonbeam, and Quincy, uh, you see the creature's in a great deal of pain and its large, bulbous eyes start to blink. Quincy, finish it off at advantage. All right, I'll just attack it with my mace then. At advantage. I'm going to step back a ways. <laughs> My, that is a 20, not a natural 20, just a regular 20, dirty 20. So the damage is going to be... Extensive. <laughs> uh, not quite six points of damage. More than enough. Quincy's blunted blow uh, finishes it off. Uh, and I went out of turn. My apologies to Moonbeam. Uh, but Quincy finishes it off. That was an accident. Honest accident. Uh, well, there you go, folks. Uh, 25 minutes in, your first kill. Uh, we still have to see if Valiant uh, can make it across the crevasse. <laughs> oh, well, let's hope there's only one. Yep. <laughs> Well, on his way down, Valiant will be able to tell you how many that. There's two. There's it's three true. more coming. There's oh four. no! <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to look right. at it. All right. So... Okay, Val. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> a fifteen. Fifteen makes it across. The across, and I've got my cloak of billowing, billowing, so I look fabulous doing it. It's like... All I can oh. envision is the boys. Uh, <laughs> That's I, I, exactly who he looks like. Yeah, oh, I'm God. The boys. <laughs> uh, folks at home, this is for mature audiences. So if you oh. watch the show, you know what words on my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, you've made it across. You've killed the carrion crawler. Like I said, the crevasse is just 
open for some reason. There's no gas or anything coming out. Uh, continue forward, or do you want to try and harvest the organs of this uh, illicit creature? Is there a use for those? Uh, well, the, there's paralysis, so if you guys want to yeah, try and remove the paralysis an sack. Hmm. Is everyone all right on their health? Should I provide healing? Um, <laughs> Valiant, Valiant's got a little thing, but he's got lay on hand, so we'll take a couple of points for that. He'll touch himself. <laughs> yeah. As paladins just, want to do. Just like Homelander. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> right. And, and you guys are an hour away from town. So, you know. Yeah. Plus, if you minus. need healing mist, I saw your finger go up. Certainly. All right. Unfortunately, uh, it won't do anything for my wardrobe, but. Uh, I can uh, definitely mourn that as well. I can go ahead and ask Cure Wounds on you. I'm going to give you uh, seven plus uh, four, plus 13 points of health back. Oh, plenty. Thank you very much. Very Life nice. cleric, baby. Uh, anybody want to try and uh, get the paralysis sack out or just say fuck it and get the I believe sack. that's a druid job there. Yeah, he, she's probably immune now. She's uh, sure, I'll <laughs> yeah, try. Go try. Give me an animal handling. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Twelve. Uh, Twelve is going to be good enough, however you... Uh, are gonna d12 against me to see if something wrong goes. Or you paralyzed again. Eleven. Uh, no. Uh, you thought you had actually nicked the sack, but you did not. So, you have yourself a coin purse size uh, pouch minus three uh, uses because you got hit once and the other two saved. But uh, you still got enough in there that you know you can slip it into a drink and. Uh, Paralyze somebody. Mm. So you got that. Other than that, it does not carry a sack filled with gold and jewels. So it appears but, as though that's it. Anything else? Just you a sack do? full of poison. <clears throat> Anything else? Get to town. No, Fair enough. Uh, you, you continue down the road. It appears as though it's rained recently because the mud is dried. Uh, about half hour into it, you start to get into the pomegranate fields. Uh, the Floral smell is very intriguing. Maybe something akin to uh, oddfishgames.com adventure sense. Uh, but it uh, it smells nice, and you start to see farmers working in the fields. Uh, they give you a hearty hi-ho, hippity-doo, uh, as they're dressed in their rather mundane togas. Uh, but they seem to be a friendly lot. Uh, and you start to come into more traffic as people with wagons and carts are taking the pomegranates in towards town. Uh, as you reach town, music is playing from somewhere. Uh, you aren't sure where, but uh, it's a very peaceful, very serene area. You are up at the top cusp of the, va of the Vale, and down below you see shipping traffic. Uh, a few, maybe four piers, uh, ships going to and fro. People down below moving about looks very friendly. Uh, you see a couple of sentry looking types on the road, bored to tears, leaning on their spears, making sure it's held up. Uh, and as you guys approach, uh, uh, home, uh, what can we do for you there, armed citizens? And they are referring to three Quincy. Well, I take a moment to look at myself upon my hand mirror, and I primp a bit to make sure I am rather dashing. Well, we are simply four travelers coming here to your, I wouldn't perhaps say town, but your community here to make sure that we can look around and pay proper homage to those who are here. Do you happen to have a Temple de Sune here by chance? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> And I shall be well like welcome that. to dude. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, the one taps the other one on the shoulder and says, one, four. Uh, looks at Moonbeam and goes, uh, Morrigan? Yes, the Morrigan. 
and uh, looks at the uh, silver superhero. It's here. Uh, yes. You guys are late. The meeting's already started. You might want to hurry. Uh, oh, you must make haste. Yeah, let's go then. Do you know where you're going? Of course. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they, they look at Moonbeam and they said your temple is three blocks that way. Kind of point, and you see a uh, raven uh, archetype atop a tall building. Tear. They point over to the right. And uh, you see, you know, the arm of Tear over to the right. Uh, Quincy, go ahead and give me a perception check. And Mist, uh, do you have a religion or do you just lick yourself as a cat? Taverns. Gotcha. What tavern's the religion? I was say dairy. I would look for dairy. <laughs> Quincy? My oh, perception dairy. is a 19. Uh, yeah, off in the distance, kind of, <laughs> kind of over towards the wharf area where uh love is at a premium uh, <laughs> is over there but valiant and moonbeam you've been told that there's some kind of meeting uh quincy they do not give you the same information uh they just are taken in by your dashing appearance and watching as mist licks himself that's so, all right the waves of love will guide me to where i need to be <clears throat> so moonbeam do you want to go to the temple Yes. Valiant, do you want to go to the temple? I uh, better check in. <laughs> Mist, do you want to go to the tavern? Definitely. Quincy, uh, tavern or temple? I'm halfway to my temple already. Very nice. Uh, you guys split the party. The party. Amazing. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll start with Valiant. Valiant, uh, you get to the temple. Uh, two guards uh, wearing the garb, the colors of your deity are right there. They uh -huh. lean over and open up the large bronze double doors and allow you to walk in. There is a meeting in progress of the mines. Uh, Quincy, uh, as you walk into the perfumed, very uh, silk, strandy, roby thing with half naked people everywhere or fully naked, uh, you feel I'm at home. Uh, this is good. Uh, you do not see any specific services going on. So, you know, it's uh, love is as love does kind of thing for you. Uh, Moonbeam, as you reach your temple, there is an elderly uh, woman uh, who greets you warmly, bows her head and says, welcome, sister. How may I help you? Uh, I... I... You on. you look familiar. Oh, really? Who do I look like? Are you Moonbeam? <sighs> <laughs> it's gonna come up a lot. <laughs> you can't fuck with your wife on stream. It's just not worth playing. I am. Uh, I, do, I do go by just the simple M now. Kind of oh, like that's Prince. very nice. Moonbeam, I remember when you were first born. Your parents uh, took a great deal of care, and I actually helped them name you. Uh, <sighs> Are you here for the meeting? Yes, I am. Very, very good. She allows you in. Uh, the standard uh, raven-looking circle is there, and there is a discussion going on. Mist, you walk into what kind of tavern do you want to go to? Do you want to go down by the wharf for a shithole, or do you want to go to one of the more upscale ones? No, more upscale tavern. Very nice. Uh, we'll start with Mist. Uh, Mist, as you reach this place, it's called the Blue Oyster. Uh, and it's, it's painted, it looks very nice, uh, but a small urchin runs into you headlong and pops down. Uh, what do you want to do? You, you mean a human child? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it just plops down? It, it hits you square just like Moonbeam did and just flattens it. You see coins going everywhere. Humans are strange creatures. They really are. Dirty, filthy creatures is what they are. <laughs> they, they, they don't bathe nearly enough. Um, coins everywhere, though, is an interesting facet of this situation. Um, mm -hmm. I will help this child retrieve their coins, minus, say, 25%. Uh, the child doesn't even wait, scampers up to his hands and knees, and boom! runs past you as you 
picking up the coins. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> At that moment in time, a group of men dressed in grayish robes round the corner. Oh, no. Uh, 18 plus 2, dirty 20, hits you head on. Give me a dexterity check to hold on to your... Um, 17 plus, uh, what is it? 4, 21. These four nice. dudes in uh, clerical robes, shaved head, long ponytail in the back, uh, push you out of the way and rise to their feet, uh, seemingly going after the child. They might be named Biff. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wave at them as they go off. Uh, you have 17 gold pieces at your feet. Wonderful. And a small item, uh, for lack of a better terminology, it looks like a chapstick case in real life, uh, but it is made of ivory and it is uh, carved. Ooh. Like a tiny scroll tube? Yep. I'm going to take that and pocket it. Scroll tube. Okay. And I'm uh, not going to mess with it. Okay. Uh, do you want to walk into the Blue Oyster? Oh, yeah. A chipper tune is played as a lot of dancing is going Excellent. on. And revelry. Uh, the bartender looks at you and says, what can I get you? Your most bitter brew. And uh, do you have accommodation here, or is there somewhere nearby you could direct me to for accommodation for three gentlemen of religious persuasion and myself? Uh, three doors down is the uh, closest inn, Inn of Respite. Thank you. Thank you. That'll be one gold. That That's easily taken care of. Okay. Uh, Moonbeam, Quincy, Valiant. Each of you enter your specific temples and are, again, in the middle of some kind of unusual gathering. Uh, they greet you with head nods as the custom for each of your things. Uh, maybe they, you know, fist bump or clang forearms for tear. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> as you guys begin to listen in... Uh, I think it's chest bump. Yeah, it's like fist bump. <laughs> so something Sorry. is amiss in town. Wow. <laughs> it's the paladin of the it's the pack that do of like dwarves. the Nilly Vanilla thing. That's, that's what the blue oyster yeah, that's what the blue oyster sounds like. <laughs> Dogs oh. barking is not my favorite sound. <laughs> so Quincy Valiant and M, you guys are clearly not your element. You've never been to this town, so you sit uh -huh. back and listen. Uh, you quickly discover that something is amiss in town. Uh, each of the temple elders is going ahead and explaining uh, that those rat bastards uh, from the temple or from the cult of Spark uh, have sent uh, interlopers, also known as adventurers, up to the mountain uh, where an old dungeon was discovered, and they have stolen an item of great importance. Uh, apparently, a large irregularly shaped gem that looks a lot like the head of a torch uh, has been taken. Now, you don't really understand the significance of this because you guys were late. Uh, so, but each of the temple elders are pointing out that you need to go out, find these cultists of Spark, uh, and bring them back to the respective temple. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, everybody nods in agreement. Uh, there's general discussion. Uh, everybody begins to empty out of the temple. They're moving in packs of three and four. Uh, as you can see them, you know, everybody's grabbing their buddy and, you know, uh, let's go get these guys. Da, 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 da. There are about 10. Uh, so there are about three different groups from each of your uh, respective religions. <laughs> each of you is alone. Uh, you may see if you can join, you may speak with the temple elder, or you can go seek out your friends. It's up to you. Well, strength in numbers is always the best way. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I can bait in my uh, temple elders. I may have some specialists to help out in this matter. So. Uh, specialists is in riffraff adventures? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, son, you run with the wrong kind of crowd, but I will not judge. That is fine. Uh, brother, somebody has to keep them on the path. So. 
Wise words have never been spoken, my son. Quincy, what do you talk to about the temple elder? I or... will let them know that I also have adventuring allies that be more than happy to apply their passions to this. And I will quickly get redressed and get my way back out. Redressed. I, I, I was going to say. I was about to say. Yeah, was not when Unfortunately, so, not it, satisfied as I would like to be this eve. But <laughs> yes, yes uh, they're, they're, your your associates haven't really quite made it to the door yet. They are going to finish business as usual because uh, honor Sunni. Uh, That's what they do. But yes, <laughs> you can get undisheveled and uh, prepare yourself. Uh, Moonbeam, you have listened to the partial dissertation that you have heard. Uh, this group of rogue adventurers uh, has been hired by the cultist of Spark to go retrieve an item. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Uh, I'd like to talk to the elders and say, I, I'm sorry, I was late. Um, I only came in halfway through. Could you explain a little bit more to me? I have friends that could help me. Uh, they begin to go ahead and discuss the fact that uh, these cultists of Spark are not one of the five major recognized religions in town. Uh, they're kind of an upshoot of uh, one of the fire gods, uh, and quite frankly, elementalists have no place in this city. They go on a somewhat uh, diatribe about how they do not like these. One of the village elder or one of the temple elders looks at you and goes, Why aren't you Moonbeam? <laughs> yes yes i no. am okay i remember when you were just little it's good to see you as she helped name you or he helped name her too <laughs> i helped give you your last name <laughs> oh lord <laughs> i'm married to one of the clerics of suny so <laughs> uh he, they go ahead and explain that uh, these adventurers went into a dungeon up on the mountain and removed a reddish irregularly shaped stone and, uh, you know, without saying it, point out that all hell is going to break loose unless this item is recovered. Uh, you need to go out, find the cultists of Spark, uh, kick the shit out of them and recover this item. So the item needs to go back where it came from? You need to bring the item and uh, any of the cultists here. Why do they need to come here? So that we can go ahead and save the world. Well, shouldn't the item go back to where it came from? You are ill-equipped to go ahead and handle this mission. Uh, so we will just go ahead and take it ourselves. Okay. Everybody roll a perception check. Uh, 19. <laughs> Natural one for me, Quincy. <laughs> He's still in basking in the glow. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> filthy 20. Valiant. 19 for Valiant. Moonbeam, Mist, and Valiant, you all feel the ground shake uh, beneath you. Quincy, feel the, uh, you feel the ground uh, shake, but you are certain as you know why. And it is not anything uh, geological. Uh, <laughs> you uh, gain a big smile on your face. You're welcome. Uh, hitch, <laughs> hitch up your britches and start to head on out. Uh, it's kind of pushed you over the edge. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Moonbeam, Quincy, and Valiance, uh, where do you want to go next? Because you three are all too fragmented. Well, I know that Mist was heading to the tavern, so I guess I'll go back there. Yeah, yeah, I was I planning on making my way back to the Temple of Tear because I know the Valiant would be going there as well. That's a good idea. Uh, I am... Valiant is still at the temple, uh, relishing in stories about slaying a carrion crawler. So, you know, end of the world bullshit can wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta brag. Uh, I gotta brag. Paladin brag, brag, paladin brag, paladin brag, brag, uh, brag. Qu Quincy, D12 against me. Seven. Eleven. Uh, just as you enter the Temple of Tear, uh, you hear Valiant explain how he and he alone has gone ahead and uh, valiantly defended his three associates who vastly needed his uh, superior martial skills uh, and just fill in the air with heat. Uh, yeah. You, however, are thinking back 
man, I really rocked her world or yes. his world. We don't judge here. So I just rocked their world. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, the paladin's I, running. I, I, I stopped my diatribe for a moment and look and turn to, to and spot Quincy. And it's just like, ah, brother Quincy, you look rather radiant. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know, friend. But we have rather important and pressing business now. We need to go and make sure that this town is safe from some ominous dealings up in the mountain. Where are the Valiant. others? Valiant. Uh, the temple elder looks and goes, is this one of the unfortunate souls you were able to defend? <laughs> it was. <laughs> Rat bastard, I'm going to throw you to the carrion crawler next time. <laughs> uh, Quincy, Quincy has posed the question on where are the others? Uh, Quincy, Valiant most likely does not know because uh, if it were up to them, they would be holding his coattails. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <Of course>. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping my cape out of the shit. <laughs> Perhaps we shall find them in the tavern, and I look at one of the temple elders, and I'll ask them if there is a tavern in town that would be a little more upscale because I know Mist's preferences. Yeah, uh, Mist, point, Mist has expensive taste. They point you in a general direction, D12 against me. 10. Fair enough. Uh, you had their Moonbeam, D12 against me. Four. Very good. Uh, Moonbeam, you cut back across town. Uh, you notice there are flower vendors, uh, basket vendors, pomegranate vendors, uh, a wide variety of merchants are in town. Uh, the sun is bright, uh, the blue sky is perfect, a nice breeze comes in from the coast, wafting the aroma of dead fish towards the center, uh, and you come across a tavern called the Blue Oyster. I go in. Uh, you hear a rather body tune. <laughs> Uh, you hear a rather body tune, and uh, you notice mist at the bar. I will say three drinks in. Oh, uh, that's about right. Mist, uh, you are being cha or challenged to a drinking contest <laughs> with a gnome. No, sir. Don't want to do it. I walk up behind him and I say, "That is a bad idea." Drinking is not a contest. Mist and Moonbeam are back together again. Uh, you guys can order some food or what have you. It is brunch time here. Uh, the prices are a little bit steep at the Blue Oyster, but the personalities present are top notch. Quincy and Valiant, as you walk through town, uh, give me a perception check, both of you, please. Uh Perception, 14. Uh, 12. Uh, both of you notice a group of monks uh, wearing kind of grayish robes, long ponytail, bald hair, dragging an urchin by his feet through the road. His robe, or tunic rather, has come up over his shoulders, uh, exposing uh, a lot of nudity and covering his face, but it only muffles the screams uh, as the monks continue to drag this guy through the path, which has a few rocks, which uh, get stuck uh. every once in a while. Uh, they look uh, overly matched. I mean, there's five of these guys here dragging a, a poor child. Do you want to ignore it, oh, noting child. that it's none of your business, or do you want to step in and get it? just caught? will not do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Valiant steps in. He puts his maul out. <laughs> it's like, Gentlemen, they start to walk around you. <laughs> I step next to him and say, oh, 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 oh. No, you were in no, the bar. You're in the bar. <laughs> oh, damn it. That's right. Okay. And, uh, they, they, they just walk around you. Well, yeah. I believe my friend is asking rather nicely if we can intervene. Yeah. If we wish for it not to be nicely, we can deal with that as well. And I'll kind of motion to his mall. Uh, Your friend needs to use his words because he just stepped <laughs> in front of us. We are taking this criminal to the shrine. 
if you'll excuse me, pretty boy and shiny guy, we need to get this thief to the temple. I was just like, well, of course, the temple to deal with this urchin is the temple of Tear, the temple of justice. I'm sure he'll be afforded a fair trial, gentlemen. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, did he steal from the temple of Tear? It doesn't matter. To you. Uh, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Move aside. And in, that, in that case, I will act as this child's defense attorney. You're all in quite a bit of trouble now. The, the barrister. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what the temple is known for, fair justice. So he's not going to let this stand. You know? right. uh, a crowd is starting to gather around. Uh, inside the Blue Oyster, the music stopped as somebody throws the door open and yells out, hey, there's going to be an ass kicking out here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, I'll throw down five gold on the bar and go outside. Yeah, I'll follow. Uh, you go out and clearly uh, the boys are, are starting a scene uh, in town that they've never been to, so this should go over real well. Good news yeah. is uh, the law, Johnny Law, is still probably leaning on his spear somewhere. Uh, <laughs> So Moonbeam and Mist, as you exit, you can see the crowd's really starting to pack around this. They formed the circle. You know, every once in a while you hear, fart, fart, fart. Uh, and you can see Valiant radiant uh, as the sun beats down on his armor, holding his uh, maul and the gorgeous Quincy just parting those eyebrows, uh, looking mean. Uh, they're, they're sizing up against uh, five cult members. Uh, Moonbeam. Missed perception check. Oh boy. Ooh. Uh, seven, six, 23. 16. Uh, Moonbeam and Mist, uh, you hear some noise uh, off to the side. You look over and you see a rather <clears throat> substantial group of cultists uh, wearing gray robes, bald head, long ponytail carrying a litter. Atop the litter is a woman resplendent uh, in crimson jewels. Uh, very stately, very uh, Cleopatra-esque. And the crowd immediately gets out of her way, uh, from judging from the looks on their robes, uh, compared to the robes of Quincy and Valiant's opponents, it would appear to be similar. Uh, the odds, whoop, just changed. Uh, Quincy Valiant perception check at disadvantage. Yeah, how many did you say was with her besides the litter bearers? About 12. Ugh. 12, 5, 17. Shitty odds. Four litter bearers. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Valiant is laser focused on the monks in front of him. So, yeah, with a four, he's not going to notice the litter coming out. Quincy? Uh, Quincy luckily rolled a 17 with a disadvantage. A lucky roll. Uh, Quincy, you notice that the six with you still holding on to the ankles of the child lean, gained... da lean down and take a knee. Oh, uh, good. You turn Thank around you. and uh, notice... Oh, crap. <laughs> yes, but is she hot? Is she hot? Yeah. <laughs> 17 charisma, her hotness. He's hot. Has. He rolled for hotness. Yes. <laughs> she is a very, very attractive uh, individual. And she is human. Uh, she makes the motion. The litter bearers drop her down. As she exits off her litter, Moonbeam, Mist, and Quincy, you notice that her attire is made completely of garnets. It's like garnet chain mail, only it's a very tightly woven dress and it fits her curves quite well. Dear God, uh, how heavy would that be? Well, she's pretty strong too. Uh, you can see, you know, she's, she's got the guns. It's a gun show. Meanwhile, Valiant, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, that would be hot too. She'd be sweating. She passes oh, by, yes. lightly touching... Uh, people as they bow down in reverence to her. She walks in and walks behind Valiant. 
Uh, Valiant, you didn't notice her, so you just lambast on these guys. Uh, uh-huh. even, even the kids, like, <laughs> sincere. Uh, give me a wisdom save as she puts her hand on you. Okay. All right. Uh-oh. What's the DC? Roll. Just roll? Okay. Yep. Okay. Wisdom? Pray yeah. for high numbers, Dave. Don't worry about it. Just pray for high numbers. Yeah, 20, not natural. Oh, very nice. Uh, you get this brief, fleeting feeling of calm. And you turn around. Now you're back to angry. Uh, and you see the visage of this beautiful woman uh, dressed in some garnet robe-esque thing. Uh how may I help you, uh, fan of tear? You turn around slowly. I'm just like, suddenly I'm like, well, hi there. Uh, <laughs> Hello, my son. Uh, I say, pardon me. Unfortunately, this child is not being afforded the dignity uh, in which this city is known for he's being dragged unceremoniously through the streets you oh know, law- his, kids his, come on in the poor kids bits are hanging out it's just like i can't let this stand she, she listens to you patiently and says <clears throat> are you aware of this child's indiscretion imagine well what i imagined i mean to deserve this i mean she puts her hand her finger on your <laughs> walks over pulls the tunic down uh covering the child's genitals uh and at this point in time you realize oh uh <laughs> it's not a child <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, that, that is that is a halfling. So a halfling. the nudity in this case is completely above board. So don't call the cops. Is this halfling um, named Skippy by any chance? It, it is not named Skippy Lee. So uh, <laughs> she she reaches down and touches the child, and he's just mesmerized. Yeah. Okay. Stands up, brushes himself off, folds his hands, uh, and stands next to her. You will come with me, my son. Uh, she looks at you, Valiant, and says, is this better treatment? I, I, no, Thank you, know, you very much, my surprised. son. Go about your and, business. Yeah, and Valiant's just and like, they, they of walk course. her away. And I'm like, of course. So, yeah. As she's leaving, do we perhaps, they mentioned that the thing that they stole was some sort of red gem of some sort? Would it mm-hmm. perhaps be somewhere upon her clothing that she's wearing right now? Probably not. They're all small garnets. There's a lot of them. It is going to be heavy and it is going to be hot. Okay. But uh, they all, all the pieces look like they've been fitted correctly. Okay. okay. Right. What else did they tell you? Yeah, they took it up into the mountain, but who knows what this lady's doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, she reascends her litter. Uh, the young halfling walks in between the two columns and they head up the hill towards uh, some yeah, so religious like sigil. Uh, looks like a crescent moon so almost. Of, uh, was open. Uh, well, should we follow behind them and see exactly where they is they're going? Yeah, I think, I, I think our, our roads led us to this moment. So, yes. Are you guys I, I going to shall. follow closely or yeah. give them some space? We'll give them a little space. <clears throat> well, with the uh, lack of fighting, uh, the crowd somewhat dejectedly <laughs> goes on and moves about their business. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm going to do it. Uh, a projectile comes out of the Ow. air <laughs> towards Valiant. <laughs> Uh, but misses him easily oh, as a pomegranate <laughs> smashes up against a building. Uh, and somebody yells out, Wanka! <laughs> uh, at you. As you guys uh, continue to serendipitously follow this, uh, the lady on the litter does not give two shits, doesn't care. Uh, the people in her retinue do not care. 
The halfling does not care. Nothing appears to be amiss. They move in and around. You guys are each peppered with, by merchants uh, trying to buy their wares. Uh, one of them says, oh, magic items, magic items for sale. I'm not interested, I'm not interested today, friend. Sorry. Uh, they begin to walk up towards the hill. Again, there's a very majestic looking building, probably religious significance. Crescent moon on the top. Uh, the litter is lowered. She gets off. She goes in. Uh, there are two very strong guards uh, wearing singlets uh, guarding the door. Everybody goes in, including the halfling. Not does not appear to be under duress whatsoever. Everybody, give me a perception check. Right, yo. Uh, seventeen. Fifteen. Uh, sixteen. Twenty. Twenty. All of you spot one of two people uh, close to this church, temple, whatever, hiding in the shadows. On the left is a female. On the right is a male. Uh, from all of your roles, uh, they look a lot like you guys. Uh, armored, weapons, a little rough around the edges kind of adventurous looking. Uh, they seem to have a rapt attention on the halfling going into the temple. They have not seen you guys. What do you want to do? I want to keep it that way. Yeah. How do you want to do that? Well, um, I can stealth. I don't know yeah. about everybody else. Unfortunately, I'm looking fabulous. Good at stealth. Either. Between Quincy and I looking fabulous. No. Uh, that, no. no. no not <laughs> happening. Yeah, you're stealthing in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'd get off to the side and move in amongst okay. any booths or anything and be yeah, as Quincy out of sight as possible. To hide because yeah, I'll it's, go with Mist because, you know, I like cats. <laughs> sure. uh, Valiant and Quincy, you guys are standing there like fallen idols. Mm. Uh, in front of this temple uh, is an Anubis-looking figure, a dog-faced Humanoid holding uh, staff right <laughs> above it. It wears a crown with the crescent moon on top. Uh, the door is shut. The two beefy guards uh, stand in front of the doors. They look to be silver or silver esque. Uh, and you guys are wide open and uh, odd. Quincy, even valiant. One, Quincy, uh, a tug on your clothing. <laughs> yes. This individual wears a long cloak, opens the cloak up and said, Want to buy a potion? What a cutie. No, I do not. Unless <laughs> it's an aphrodisiac. No. Right. Want to buy a scroll? <laughs> no. Unless it is a page of the Kama Sutra, I'm not interested. Or a filter of My love. brother has one of those. If you'd like to come with me, we can make it a sales arrangement. As tempting as that sounds, friend, I'm in the middle of something rather dire. And I'll look to Valiant and I'll say, those two folks over there, the man and the woman, you. do you believe they are perhaps part of their adventuring party that stole the gem in the first place? I, I turn and I just slightly kind of turn my gaze toward them. Mm -hmm. Perception check. And are you gazing towards the woman or the man? Uh, both. <laughs> one on one side, one on the say, other. Wow. Yeah, that, oh, they're on emphasis. <laughs> sides. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Unless you're Sorry, little mis and can little little misinformation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't tell you he was Valley, chameleon folk. I suddenly just go to the side. I'm gonna uh, do it. I'm gonna do it real stealthy. <laughs> His grandfather was a goldfish. Right. Uh, he has a very course, narrow Valiant, face. Valiant's going to notice the female first. So, huh? <laughs> so give me your roll. Yeah. Oh, oh Val, you sexist pig. Sixteen. No, Val's a sexy. Sixteen. Uh, she, <laughs> she is gone now. Okay. Moonbeam and Mist. Did you go to the left where the female was, or did you go to the right where the male was? I left. Okay, I, left. I followed him. Towards the female. Uh, sneaking up against a nearby building, 
she's totally out of your view now, but you can keep an eye on the guy on the right, and he seems to be ducking around a building, which happens to be another tavern. This tavern does not appear to be as classy as the Blue Oyster. Is it the Brown Oyster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, its real name is known as Loogies. <laughs> it's the Sea Slug Tavern. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, Loogies you know what? <laughs> That's going in. Uh, <laughs> Loogies Brown Oyster. Yeah. Wow. Could not have come up with that one. Because I have taste. Uh, I can't go in there unless you pay me to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, so Valiant craning his neck has now lost sight of the female. Clearly, by the time you turn around, the male will also be gone. Uh, yeah. So, you're kind of screwed. However, yeah. Quincy and Valiant, you know where Mist and Moonbeam went. You can glance over to them and maybe they can give you an idea. Yeah, uh, I'll do that. I'll kind of peer for them. Look. Do you guys want to point out the uh, Luigi or the Lugies brown Lugies. oyster? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll give it that. Uh, as they point over, uh, you two finely dressed individuals both glance over. Clearly, uh, there's going to be a stench at this place. You can just right. tell from the outside. The color brown. Like, we can hear them. I'm chanting. pretty sure they could see me shudder when I pointed at it. Yeah, yeah look, we can hear them like chanting Detroit. whatever for for a drink known as the oyster shot, which is like a royal raw oyster mm. in with like what a, some some yeah. alcohol. <laughs> uh, now, now, not to disparage the entire clientele, uh, followers of Sunni might be in there, closely followed by followers of the Great Healer. I'm just saying, <laughs> so you know, you don't know. Uh, oh, they might need healing after staying in that place. Yeah, Moonbeam yeah. and Mist, uh, you can tell from the look on Valiant's face that you've lost sight of the female on your side. You guys point to Loogies. Uh, Quincy and Valiant, you want to head over to uh, the Dove bar. It's not even a dive. It's a Dove. It's a Dove. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going in. Yeah, it's a dirty job, but someone must do it. It's right next to the tavern called the latrine <laughs> i was about to say uh, uh yeah, true and, words were never spoken brother. as you guys open the door uh uh an aroma a hits perfume you, hits you like a bat in the face uh if you have putrid sewers from odd fish games you'll oh. know what i'm talking about oh. where you can smell kyle's nose That's so uh, bad. Oh. It, it is it is a it is a ripe smell uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, just the, 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 dirt of, the dirt of the land uh, is in this place. It's dark, it's dim, and it has no music. Instead, it has a performer, oh. a live performer oh. on the left. Oh. Is it I hate okay. everything about this place, Valiant. <laughs> is there uh, an animal I with the performer? <laughs> Not an animal. Uh, Moonbeam and Mist, are you going to venture mm. in after your friend? Yes. Yeah, yeah. As We're going to drag guys... our feet and moan about it, though. <laughs> As you guys walk in, Quincy and Valiant have already breached the opening, uh, the orifice as it is. Uh, it, it's oh. dimly lit. It's got oil pots for illumination, so there's a stench. Uh, the black mm -hmm. coating on the wall looks bad. As you look over to the left, there is a performer uh, with a little wooden man on his arm. Oh. And the little wooden man is talking. Uh, they are wrapped around each other. Clearly, this is what... You know what? Give me an arcana check. Let's see if you've ever seen one of these before. Well, at least there's no donkey. <laughs> Uh, 17. I don't think I've even seen this one. 13. <laughs> Let me guess. The dummy's the man. <laughs> I might think that. I got a 1. Nice. I got a 12. Uh, Quincy, you don't know what it is, Valiant. It's a vent ventricle. Vent vent crawler. Something like a ventrilo. Ventrilo That's ventriloquist it. kind of thing. That's it. 
uh, the swarthy man behind the bar uh, has scars all over his face. His nose is kind of crooked. Uh, he tells you you're letting the flies out. What do you want? <laughs> it's a real classy place. Surely you wouldn't is... want to air the place out a bit. Uh, my wife's name is Shirley. I'm Mel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, as you overhear, the ventriloquist is telling absolutely horrid jokes. No, horrid. Geez. Just horrible jokes. Uh, Mel asks you what you want. What do you want? Information, uh, hopefully, as quickly as possible so we can go outside. <laughs> and a Chardonnay. <laughs> Chardonnay is not working. Do they know what that check is? The temple of, <laughs> check the temple of uh, Suni. Suni? <laughs> That's it. Uh, does that thing need to be on a leash and points at Mist? Well, Ooh. no. That's rude. Of course. Not. Well, the last one that walked into my door ordered a drink and then just kept knocking it off and ordering more drinks. And I really didn't appreciate <laughs> it. Well, you can't blame them. That's just what they do. That's what they do. <laughs> Everybody perception check. No, no. Ooh, natural 20. So that's a Ooh, nice. 24. Uh, 14 for Valiant. Um, that's a 10 for Mist. 12. Uh, Moonbeam, Quincy, and Valiant, uh, you pick up what the ventriloquist is saying. Mist, you're pretty pissed off about Mel's comment. Quincy, <laughs> you hear verbatim in... Uh, a Jerry Seinfeld esque voice. What's the deal with Tabaxi? <laughs> tabaxi racist, just like Carol. <laughs> She's got it. Yeah, there's another email. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, well, wait, there's the uh, inbox. <laughs> Mel gets you uh, three. She's not on Twitch, obviously, because I haven't seen anything in the comment feed. Uh, there you go. Uh, it gives you three mugs and a cracked mug for the tabaxi. It has some kind of swill in it that smells different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in the army. Uh, you, you buy this. Uh, I'll get you your information. President Hooch. Oh, buy it. Do we have to drink it? I don't give a shit what you do with it. Two, right. copper, two copper each. You can tell this is an upscale I, place. I, I pull out a silver piece, put it Ooh, on the counter, and then spender. I knock the drink off the counter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then I put up a gold piece and ask for his best beer. <laughs> Mel reaches down, picks it up, Nice. <laughs> and hands it back to you. Now I'll drink it. <laughs> Somewhere out there you hear the term hairball thrown out by the <laughs> ventriloquist and his dummy. Oh, we need to go well. kick his ass. Mel wants to know what you want. So I'm going to go watch the ventriloquist. <clears throat> okay. uh, it is bad. It is horrific. I mean, it is... Uh, I. I tell better jokes, and we all know that is impossible. That is impossible. The ventriloquist is horrible. Quincy, Valiant, and Moonbeam, you are sitting at the bar. Uh, what do you want to ask? Um, I, I asked if two other individuals dressed in similar garb been in here earlier in adventure wear. Played. Adventure types? Yes. Yeah, they've been in here. This is a great spot. A lot of adventures come through here. We're kind of well known for that. Ah. Uh, Okay. Miss, Mills. somebody sits down next to you. It's a Kenku. <laughs> <laughs> you need a hairball Quincy, on them. <laughs> Quincy, Valiant, and Moonbeam. Next question. Uh, Ipshi, Ipshi, I have customers. Ipshi, Ipshi. That There's is... like four customers in this place in the state. Yeah, in this. particular, in particular, male and female recently. <laughs> Like within the last. I don't judge hour. you, sexist pig. <laughs> well, hate to throw pronouns out there. Two individuals. Uh, yeah. I kind of give a description of what I saw briefly. And 
Uh, they might have been in here. I'm real busy. I we we got the the uh, noon crowd here, and again, you guys look around. Four <laughs> people. Four, four people aside from you, and you notice the Kenku is laughing hysterically at the jokes, and Mist is just kind of staring at it. <laughs> uh, at every joke uh, the pair tell, the Kenku mimics it just the same. So it's like a loudspeaker. Nice. And nice. each time, Mist is. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps we are wasting our time here, Valiant. Perhaps we should just <laughs> firsthand see what is going on with these adventurers outside. No, perhaps. Thank you, everybody. I'll be here all day. Don't forget to tip your waitress. Uh, you know, like, wear a longer skirt. Put a mask on. Ha <laughs> ha I'll catch you in an hour. <laughs> uh, the, the ventriloquist and the dummy come walking down, and they see three. Quincy. And they come up to you. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, the dummy... You a wizard? And, Not and, quite, friend. And, and, and the human carrying him, no movement. Good ventriloquist, shitty jokes. Ah. Not quite, friend. I'm actually a traveling priest of sorts, spreading the message of love and passion that is put forth by Sune herself. Ooh, Sune. Uh, the dummy taps the human on the shoulder, and the human sets down the dummy and just and the dummy's like, so, uh, you, uh, you one of them there love doctors. Something like that. Yeah. yeah you're just like that person who was in here earlier. Hey, give me another splitter cocktail. And this thing is made of wood. <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to do an investigation check to see if it was like a costume that this person was No, wearing. I mean, you can see that there's a, you know, lynch pin. I mean, whatever. Is, so... uh, yeah, it's, it's a freaking doll. Uh, Mist, uh, you and the Kenku. The Kenku. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? How's your day going? <clears throat> Oh, excellent. Yours? You, great. You want to get out of this place, get some magic item? I know a guy who knows kittens. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard wow. the dish. Kenkus Kitten. are not suave. My name's Alcatraz. Alcatraz, the bird man of Alcatraz. There you go. Alcatraz. Nice. Should have made him an era cocker, but oh well. Mm -hmm. uh, Quincy, Valiant, and Moonbeam. Uh, the little wooden guy is kind of amusing. Yeah. yeah. When he's not telling shit jokes. Yeah. So, if I'll, uh, I'll buy him a drink and I'll ask him, so you spoke earlier of another follower of Sune who was here before. Do they have any sort of actual business you could tell me about? No, they're uh, they're one of them uh, folks that went up the mountain. Ah, uh, yes, we are mm -hmm. actually looking for those people. They are friends of ours, and we fear that might have had some misgivings come to them. Could you they owe you money, support? don't they? Yes, actually, they do. Yeah, I read that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, get me another pledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you help us or not? Kind of help you want. I certainly can't do anything about this guy's face. Points at Quincy. He goes, this thing's immaculate. Well, we need to find these people. We do. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> they're staying at the inn. Which inn? The in and out behind here. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, my nice. good friend. And I'll get up and I'll tap him on his shoulder. Enjoy your wood, and I will. Move to the front door. Remember, if you ever need any wood, I'm your guy. Mist. So how old are you? Nineteen. So 
They're probably about ready to die. Not nearly. But you are. <laughs> Well, I got a few more years in me. I'm only four. You're looking so, kind of molty. Well, it is the season. Plus, you know, I was uh, had a ball of string out back. I was playing with. <laughs> Just saying, you know. I, I uh, sent you a DM. <clears throat> Yikes! <laughs> uh, you you can try. <laughs> <clears throat> Eileen, or oh, would I say, don't be persuaded. <laughs> Slide a hand 24. Uh, you get a key. It's a brass key. Mm, nifty. I'll just hide that away real quick. Cool. Uh, so you, me, and some kittens? Oh, yeah, you, me, let's go. Oh, All that's right. kind of creepy. All right. All wow. right. Uh, Everybody's thirsty in this party, apparently. Apparently. (laughs) Religion breeds sexuality. Uh, Mist, uh, the Kenku walks out. You can't tell if it's male or female. It's a bird. Uh, And they head over across the street. Uh, Quincy, Valiant, and Moonbeam, you are told uh, the in and out is right behind the tavern. I'll just, I'll go over and join the rest of the party. So you're just going to strand them. Yep. Wow, what a dick. I think I met you in every bar I was in when I was in my 20s. Uh, <laughs> nice. You, you come back, uh, the little wooden guy is rubbing his limbs with his drink, and he's getting a nice sheen going he's on. He's rubbing one out. It's a, very, it's a very toxic aroma. Wow. Rubbing his wood right here in the middle of the bar. The cheese yeah. Making yeah. <laughs> I mean, Normally you have to go so to the bad. Temple of Sunni for that one. Wow. That? I said, is that why it smells so bad? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of reasons why it smells bad. <laughs> That's what to say. Yeah, That's the reason. least. <laughs> uh, the wooden man says, Mel, can they go out the back door? Mm. Say again, Frank. Sorry. Yeah. He asks Mel if they can go out the back door. Oh, okay. Okay. This is Mel. Uh, this is Mel. Yeah. Mel the face. Nice. Uh, and his son toast. <laughs> <laughs> does it does a mysteriously appearing gold piece change Mel's expression any? Yeah, it's right that way. And I'll hand him two. <laughs> As you uh walk out the back door, uh you're in an alley essentially. There is a drunk with his head on uh, the in and out peeing on the wall. Uh, <laughs> and there is a large, large puddle. This guy probably has not peed in a very long time. Uh, as the sunlight shimmers into your eyes, you kind of squint, you watch, and this guy's head goes down the stucco wall as he passes out. Uh, his genitals are outside. He pees down his leg. I was about to say, he's probably marks, still peeing. <laughs> uh, scratch marks along the, the forehead. About that time, two guardsmen with spears. Oi, what are you doing there? Uh, and he points at. Oh, there's four of you. Four. Valiant. Oi, what are you doing there with that guy? Seriously? <laughs> it's an urban adventure. It's either that or I'll throw chamber pots at you. No, no, no. Valiant says that. Like, <clears throat> seriously? Yeah, seriously. What are you doing with this guy? One one of them walks over and shakes him. Otis! Otis, are you okay? Uh the portly man uh, starts to get up and points at Otis. Oh. Let's see. That guy robbed me. <laughs> Oh, please. Do I look like anyone who robs anyone? Persuasion check. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, 17. Uh, Otis, I don't think that guy robbed you. Maybe he didn't pay him. Does he have a regular room at the station? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Folks, if you're too young to get that joke, watch Andy Griffith. You'll understand. <laughs> you won't be disappointed. You got uh, That's why his name was Otis. 
the, the guards are like, eh, you blokes move along. Get out of get out of the alley. Watch the watch the shits behind you. Everybody roll uh just a straight up D twenty, see if any of you back into shit. <laughs> Eighteen. I think I just backed into shit. Three. <laughs> Eleven. It wasn't a one, but uh what was it? A six. Uh, no, you did not. Quincy uh, stepped right at the edge of the pile. Now your boot smells. Uh, you guys can head down. This is just a blank wall. There's a lot of graffiti on it. Uh, some of it is pornographic in nature. Uh, Quincy, you will appreciate it because it looks like the tenants of SUNY uh, and the government. So, you know, it's kind of a mix there uh, with uh, opinions on what the government can do to itself. Uh, as you round the corner, uh, you can see the main slash only entrance to the in and out. And it is classy because the in and out is written in charcoal and above it, the Hampton Inn is all scribbled out, but you can still read it. So, <laughs> wow. so the in nice. And out. <laughs> nice. Hampton Inn, if you want to sponsor us, we'll go ahead and change that to the Holiday Inn. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, inside is a portly female uh, gatekeeper slash uh, innkeeper. Hmm. She has a single fly right on her eyebrow, and I said eyebrow. It's a monoprow. Uh, and she is eating some kind of sandwich that smells bad. Uh, everybody, are can a check for the cheese. Limburger. Oh, yeah, three. <laughs> That's where I needed a yeah. natural 20 right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely the best time to roll a natural 20, Frank. Uh, only the cat recognizes Limburger cheese, and that is it. There's uh, no meat on that. It's two slices of bread and a hunk of limbo. No, my dad is it loves even that. Based on rye. Well, I was about to say, and, from what I heard, that's the best way to eat it. Yeah, <laughs> on rye. And she, she has she has a rather noticeable chunk of it on uh, a little bit of facial hair that she has. I keep imagining the female dodgeball player in dodgeball. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Right. Does she have herpes on her lips? Uh, not on her lips. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Lips. She uh, she wants to know what you want, and as she spits out her food, as she asks, it goes all over movie. Oh, <laughs> come on. The dice give up the dice take it away. The dice spatter you with milk. What do you want? And it's just shooting. Cheese out I you. push the attractive guys to the front and say, deal with this shit. <laughs> I'm with Moonbeam. Uh, I say, well, why? We're, we're looking for two other adventurers that have been here recently. You're one sick bastard. You need to go to the Temple of Sunni for that kind of thing. We don't like that stuff. That was about to say, well, I guess we got to hit the Temple of Sunni, huh, Brother Quincy? <laughs> uh, it's interesting that you mentioned her, because we are looking for one of my fellow followers. Have you seen anyone who bears this symbol? And I'll hold up the hand mirror, and it's got the symbol of Sunni on the back. Have you seen anyone who has, perhaps, given worship to Lady Firehair? <laughs> 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 Oh, nice. <laughs> and you can see the tooth wiggling. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know there, uh, pretty boy. Uh, what's it worth to you? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> About three gold. Hell, yeah. They're up in room six, right next to my room. I will take your word for that. I'll give her the three gold, and I'll look to the party. Let's go. Let's go. And, and she takes the gold. She does that Hannibal Lecter finger roll across. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, you look around. Uh, you don't see any stairs inside. Yeah. Um. Are the stairs outside? <laughs> Not that you've seen. You've gone from the back. Around to the right to the front. Hmm. 
Interesting. Hmm. Is there a balcony up there or anything? Do you need help? How do we get upstairs, lady? Give me your hand, brave soul, and I will take you up there. Yes. Give yes, her yes, your Quincy. Hand. Give her your hand. She'll take you there. <laughs> I looked. I look back to the party. Take you one all for owe the me team. one. Take one for the team. You all owe me for this. <laughs> I will take her hand. Three gold. Her, her hand is both dry and moist at the same, same time. time. <laughs> oh, what was that? As, thing? As, as Check, please. <laughs> As she leads you outside, you notice that her moo-moo is caught in the crack of her ass, kind of hiking it up into a V formation that is not a good look. She takes you outside, hooks a left, hooks another left, and there on that side of the building are stairs going up with a doorway in there. Right up there, my love, right next <laughs> to right Can we just my room. kill her? <laughs> No, I mean, Brother seriously, Quincy. can we just kill her? She gives I, you the bag uh, and allows you guys to go back up. She has to go finish her sandwich. Yeah, no, I, mean, bro, I, I smile and I'm saying, apparently the stairway to heaven. <laughs> 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 well, right. you did ask for a friend for you and your friend. I can yes. be a friend. And I'm still sitting here going, can we kill her? She's gross. <laughs> I mean, as Good. a druid. You want to use my dagger? That's gross. Hey. That goes in against like, nature. You're supposed to like molds and uh, fungi, so. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, Why does the, killing her go against nature? It doesn't. Her living okay. goes against nature. Uh, the stairs are a little bit rickety, especially under the uh, obtrusive weight of Valiant, the heavily armored paladin. Who wants to go up the stairs first? Well, let's have him go up first and make sure it holds his weight before the rest of us go. Yeah, Valiant, Valiant will go. <laughs> uh, the stairs kind of cattywampus and kind of move a little bit. As you use the handrail up, you notice over on the right handrail, there's some blood. <laughs> on oh. the left, uh, there's some uh, bird shit. Okay. Is that uh, the cash? Cool. Oh, yeah, both are fresh. Great. It's the Kenku. It is the Kenku. <laughs> as, uh, as you go up the stairs, Valiant, uh, uh, give me a straight up D20. Let's make sure the, the stairs. The landing holds, as long as I don't roll a one, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 13. All right, uh, it's it's iffy, it's dicey. Yeah. Uh, but you make it up to the top, you bypass the blood and the bird poop. Uh, you get to the top and you see a trickle of blood going down the main hallway. There are rooms to the left, rooms to the right. Uh, because this is subtropical, there's no door. It's just a doorway with an open door. Uh, who's up next? I'll go up next. You're going to be fine. Who's up third? Well, actually... Uh, Quincy and Moonbeam, you guys are going to be fine. As you guys go up these rickety set of stairs, uh, blood, bird shit, uh, whatever, uh, none of you can see the blood trail going down the main hallway because this is a narrow pass. Valiant, you are leading the way with your red, white, blue, America, Star Spangled Banner shooting out her ass. You, know, <laughs> you can see it. Uh, what room did she say? Six. Yep. Very good. Uh, you can see four, five, six, seven. This stuff ain't messed with my memory enough yet. As I just say, you need to smoke more. <laughs> the blood trail goes to room six. Okay. Convenient. Of course it does. Yeah. I point that out. Like, we need you to stop will... that from happening. Everybody give me a perception check. Something all over the place. Ah, not good. Uh, In my new detail, nineteen twenty-six. Oh yeah. No, I really want to save the nat twenties for something else. Ten. <laughs> uh, Mist and Valiant, you smell uh, a familiar uh, herbage uh known in some Excellent. circles as meowy wowie oh my in the, oh, in the Margu campaign i was about to say are they from Margu? Wow. <laughs> uh and it is this it is, that gnome leaf baby 
it's, <laughs> it's quite steep. That's some uh, expensive shit. But, oh, good. But again, the blood trail kind of zigzags and goes into room six. Well, I need to be in room six. <laughs> Better than catnip. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have tools for that. And proficiency. Who's bringing up the rear? I'll go last. Okay. I'll give me a perception check, Quincy. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit better. Uh, 15. Yeah, sporadic merchants uh, moving around. Some followers of SUNY are uh, in the uh, alleyway. Uh-huh. It'll take about a 19 to unlock that door. Oh, yeah. It's easy. This is a simple lock, simple latch lock. You pop it open. Easy peasy. You only use your ooh, Tom and Jerry cat nail. Flip it over. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, face down, large pool of blood. Mail. Excellent. Anything else? Uh, yeah, there is a, a incense burner, and it's on full tilt. <laughs> any, any people like? No, this this spacious abode is about seventy five square feet. Uh, however, it looks like there are five other bedrolls along with the single stained uh, mattress in the corner. Gross. That's an incense uh, burner sensor like thing. There's probably a lid for it. I'll put that on. Tamp the now, smoke down. Now some. the smell of the room starts to filter oh. in. <clears throat> You're big on smells tonight. Yes, I am. Yep. It's, then then we loot the body. It's called imagery. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, the body has two things of note. One is a map. It looks like it's to a dungeon of some kind possibly in this region. Uh, the other one has 120 gold pieces in small rectangular ingots. Uh, Quincy, yep. somebody's coming this way. We're being joined, I'll say it to the others, and then I'll walk down to where that person is coming and I'll like mm -hmm. intercept them, try to hold them off to give my allies time to finish up quick. They are at the base of the stairs. They look up, their cowl is over their face. Uh, clean shaven, so you can't tell male or female. Uh, they look at you. Uh, their traveling cloak is charcoal with uh, red veins in it. Interesting. Uh, mm. they, you said they've seen me, though? Mm hmm Okay. Um. Okay. <clears throat> uh. Not sure what they do. They are, they're coming up towards the room, or they're just coming up they into are the back at, at the stairs. I see. I'll just give them a nod and just kind of step out of the way and see what they do. I'm readying a spell. If they do something hostile, the whole person spell. Okay. Uh, you see the hands come out, uh, gritty, bony hands, possibly male, and uh, blue light comes out of their hands striking the bottom part of the stairs, shattering the wood, and making the whole egress groan loudly. Uh, Moonbeam, Mist, and Valiant, you probably heard Quincy. You definitely heard the commotion outside. Quincy, you were readying, readying a spell. You said no. hold person? Yes. Uh, that is a 19 on the die. It'll pass, uh, definitely. Yeah, especially this person, because they have a, a high wisdom. Uh, and they flee around the corner in the alley next to the two Sunni worshippers. I'll yell to the group, we're up! And I'll try to, if I can, do an athletics ch check to try to get down <laughs> towards where they are on the ground and try to pursue them. Sure. Um, oh, good, good roll. Uh, 16 plus 3, 19. You Is there a window in the room? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is not the Hojo's. This is way below Hojo level. On the edge of town where you lived, you have a place that's made out of cinder block that offers room by the hour. Wow. That's uh, what this place is. It's out by the airport. <laughs> without without <Wait>. fire code. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no window in the room. There's no window in the room. Uh, you hear that's uh, the incense. <laughs> yeah, you you hear Quincy yell out, "The game is afoot!" Uh, he runs halfway down the stairs, Stop. makes the leap of faith, uh, and lands very well. 
as you look down the alley, you still see the two Sunni worshipers going at it like mad dogs, and you see the cloak. Uh, the cowl has flown back. It is a gray-haired individual. Again, probably a dude, uh, but they've got a pretty good head start. They run about two buildings down and hang a right. Uh, so it's going to take it back into the main plaza. Uh, Valiant, Mist, and Moonbeam. You don't know what the fuck is going on because Mist is ripping off the dead guy because he has no shame whatsoever. What do you three want to do? Of course not. Uh, on Quincy's cue, uh, Valiant has uh, dashed out of the room and hopefully in time to see Quincy make a leap and then Valiant will do the same. In heavy armor? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, go, go for that. Yeah. So, what do I, athletics check? Yep. Uh, and I'll follow him right after I tuck that gold away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 15. <laughs> uh, what's your armor class bonus? Uh, my AC bonus? Uh, the, 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 well, my armor class is 20. So, What's your AC bonus, though? Because that's your bonus. minus. Oh, oh, okay. Um, uh, I you just my, get disadvantage on certain checks. Is that what you're talking about? With yeah. Armor? Yeah. 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 Heavy armor is disadvantage usually, or minus five. Oh, it's mithril. It's mithril, actually. Oh. Yeah. How do you get mithril at level three? <laughs> <laughs> He's so dashing, you know. I'm that, trying bullshit. Uh, I'm a good barrister. Hey, I got yeah. 120 you can borrow. I didn't borrow. say I was scrupulous. <laughs> I've had some pretty shady clients. I, I'm going to go. say I'm going to say you make it down, but not gracefully. Uh, yeah, I, I would go with that probably. Miss, yeah. Mist and Moonbeam, you are on the heels. Go ahead and give me athletics checks. I was about to say I was looking. I was like, oh, Metro. <laughs> I, I, I think that with a 23, oh, I'm going to do a backflip on the way down. Sure. Yeah. I'm hoping Moonbeam botches it so she can tackle her. Damn it. All three of you land. Uh, Quincy is halfway down the alleyway. Uh, the two folks are really going at it hot and heavy. They don't seem to give a shit. Uh, Quincy, you notice that the individual you are in hot pursuit of has gone into a building through a back door. I will. Um, I don't want to lose them, so I'm just going to slow my pace a little bit so my allies can try to catch up, but I'm still sure. going to continue to pursue. Sure. Uh, you get to the door. Uh, your associates are about 15 feet behind you. Okay. And uh, s seeing that they can see me, I'm just going to continue to go. Do you want to go in the door? Yeah. Or do you want to surround the building? Uh, well, I guess, you know what? I'll, I'll stay here at this door. I'll, uh, I'll kind of yell and then kind of motion with my hands for them to go to the other sides of the building. Hope we try to box them in. That's a good idea. Sure. Uh, the, the building itself butts up against the next one over. Okay. So you have to go the long way around. I see. Okay. But you can start. I'll signal to the other side. Then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll catch the sign and go. It, it gives you the bunt sign. Uh, yeah. Now, does everybody zip around towards the front because there's not going to be an entrance on the side or does somebody stay with Quincy? I'll stay with Quincy. Okay. Mist and Pretty Moonbeam, boys unite. You guys uh, go around. Yeah, you guys got to <laughs> oh, wonder twin power. So, so far, I'd prefer to stick with Moonbeam. <laughs> docking. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, they, can do, they can practice that kind of docking procedures. <laughs> around the other side of the building, I'll go with Moonbeam. Uh, Moonbeam and Mist, give me a perception check. The divine Mizam here. Yeah. Oh, I'm 16. Mm, what is that? Ooh, 20. Uh, yeah, you guys see several people inside this building. Uh, it looks like some kind of scriptorium. Quincy, Valiant, you've given them enough time, in your opinion, uh, to get around to the front. Do you want to charge in or just guard the back door? I'll look at Valiant. I'll just give him a nod. And I'm going to go right in. Yeah, Valiant charges in. <laughs> They're you open both the door and the charge in. What else? Glyph of do? Warding activates. <laughs> of course. <laughs> give me a uh, saving throw. The lawful good are so predictable. <laughs> I'm chaotic. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, okay. Well, the good are so predictable. <laughs> uh, fair. What, what, what kind of save? Of yeah. Wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, okay. I'm good at that one. That's good. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My, my, my bad. Dexterity. My bad. Oh, that's, that's the one I'm bad okay, at. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. I got a 10. 10 on the die plus zero. Uh, uh, 13 for Valiant. Uh, the Thunder Glyph of Warding activates smashing Quincy across the alley into a building for full damage. Uh, oh. Valiant, you're going to take half. This is going to hurt. Uh, oh, yeah. Quincy, how much? Valiant uh, will just touch himself again. How much? How much? Uh, how many hit points do you have? I'm currently at 30, 3 0. Oh, you're lucky because holy shit. 48, I rolled. Four twos, <laughs> uh, eight damage and four damage. Moonbeam missed. You hear some kind of <laughs> cacophony because you remember from a all cacophony. that sex. On, on the backside, uh, and you, you see, see what you did there, Frank. <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, and you see a gray-haired guy in a dark cloak with red veins running towards the front door, right at you. Moonbeam and missed. You two give me. Uh, Initiative, please. Oh. Uh, ooh, that is a natural 20 wasted on initiative. 24. <clears throat> I really only needed, like, you know, 16. 16 would have been Yeah, Two. but 24 I really need. Two's not going to beat me. Uh, is it going to take Quincy and I around to recover, to get back? Yep. Yeah. If you guys want to roll your initiative, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Quincy initiative is 13. But after uh, my thunderous display. Uh, 18 for Valiant. Fair enough. Uh, Mist, uh, it looks like you're going to have the drop because this guy's coming right out the front door. Hmm. Just like the drop is and he doesn't have any idea I'm there at all? He knows. There's a window there. Oh, damn it. Man, I'll throw my sneak attack nice. damage on it if you want me. Uh, okay. Um, I guess doesn't look like I can really use a ranged weapon in this situation right as he comes out the door. So, um, Skimitar? Sure. Oh, let's do this. What's Skimitar? It's a 17 uh, is your magic six. number to hit this guy. I hit him into the wall and uh, five plus four, nine points of slashing damage. Nicely done. Uh, his turn, he whips out a mace uh, that's painted red and yellow uh, no. as he grips it tightly. <laughs> it looks rather fierce. He is going to aim odd or even. Even. Uh, he did not appreciate the punch, Miss. Oh, only a 7 plus 6 is 13. Not even close. Uh, Moonbeam, uh, this guy looks tough. What do you want to do? I'll do fire. Huh? Ooh. Nice. 20. Uh, yeah, that hits. Okay. Um. Oh, boy. Sorry, my eyes are bad. Sorry, we're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> After looking at the guy polishing his wood, I would expect no less. Exactly. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, that is a... Seven. Got it. Uh, Valiant and Quincy, as you rush through the now charred thunder splintered door uh give me d12s against me quincy first five four uh valiant i'm gonna give you the old one two frank it's a 12. Yes. Uh, two uh both of you leave your way past the proprietor and any of the merch or any of the people inside top of the order 24 missed uh yep. this guy is now surrounded your two associates are coming uh in from behind 
You got it wrapped up. This is easy. Give me a perception check. Uh oh. Uh, twenty, dirty. Uh, out of the corner of your eye, some figure is approaching from your left. Uh, but in the meantime, this dude's right in front of you. Uh, that dude is going to get eighteen. That'll work to hit. Thank God. And uh, six more points of slashing damage. Got it. Uh, next up is the eighteen. Valiant, you are still inside the building. This guy is in the doorway. He has made himself sideways, so he sees you coming, uh, but he's ripe for the picking. Okay. Uh, Valiant sees him, correct? Correct. At this point. Yeah. Uh, Valiant's going to... He's going to strike. <laughs> sure. All right. So... All right. Hammer time, baby. Hammer time. Um, now, Valiant is a savage attacker, so he rolls damage twice and takes the higher of the two. So, nice. Uh, that's a 22 yes. to hit. That is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, you say. Nice. Uh, a spectral mace appears in front of you, Valiant. Uh, Miss the real mace appears in front of you, but odd even. Eight, it's going after you, Miss. The spiritual weapon, odd, Quincy, even, Valiant. Even, four, Valiant. So, Miss. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, oh. <laughs> give me a wisdom save. As the mace connects and you feel 15. electricity course through your body, uh, you are going to take half. So you get this and this. Gimme, give gimme, give ow. Add three. <laughs> yeah, meow. Ooh. Uh, two murder hobos and a four. Uh, ow. So 16 hit points. Ow. Uh, um, ow. As, as a reaction, I move 15 feet away from him. Sure. Uh, singed. Uh, Can't do an opportunity attack, by the way. Which way do you move? Um, I'm going to have to move back. Okay. Away. Fair enough. Uh, the spiritual weapon. Uh, 14. Uh, plus 4. 18, Valiant? Uh, 18 misses. Okay. Uh, next up is... Quincy. Quincy. All right. Um, just to be sure, we're all in uh, general proximity of each other now? You, uh, he, this is a figure eight. You guys are on one loop and those two are on the other and then he's in the middle where you cross. Okay, my allies, would, would they be within 30 feet, you would say? Or oh, no? easily, yeah, easily. Okay, then I'm going to pull out the mirror and I flick it and it catches the light and I shine it on each of my companions in turn mm -hmm. and then I'm going to cast the bless spell. So all of you are going to be able to, while I concentrate on Sune's power, you all are going to be able to add a d4 to every time you add, roll an attack roll and a saving throw. Yes. Awesome. Now is the uh, the range 30 feet? Yes. Uh, Miss, that puts you out of range. Uh-oh. So you that's why I was trying to catch that. Lady yeah, that's why he was doing this. <laughs> uh, Moonbeam, chase the laser perception check. So it just works on just Valiant and Moonbeam. Is that what happened? Correct. Okay, that's fine. Well, would I know he's out of out of range? Mm, you might. Seventeen. Uh, Moonbeam, somebody's coming. Don't up worry on, about on it. On your left. I just if he's out of range, I'll do it on myself too. Yeah, you can do it on yourself. That'd be me, Moonbeam, and Valiant then. Okay, yep, just my So, uh, Moonbeam, you have your choice. You can go after this asshole or whoever is coming up on your left. You have not identified them yet. Uh, uh. Well, I need to go after the asshole. Okay, go ahead. I think I was, as I was moving back, I'd swap out to my bow. Okay. 18 hits. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yes. I roll an initiative for the person coming up on your left. You see. Ominous. <laughs> Uh, That's that okay. person I was going to worry about later. Now I can worry about them. You can worry <laughs> about them now. <laughs> Nine. Nice. Almost got him. Uh, this dude is in a lot of trouble. However, missed wisdom save, please. Yes, indeed. Um, Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen is good enough. You momentarily feel your body held. Uh, but then you are not. You are up. Uh, I can see the figure approaching from the left. Yep, it looks like it's going to hit Moonbeam. Oh, I'm going to try to put an arrow right in its head. Thank Moon you. Moonbeam's head or... <laughs> the, 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 the approaching figure. Please do. Um, that's going to be... Uh, what is it? With the stupid... It's plus, Okay, uh, that's going to be 22 He's to hit. Way. And uh, 7 plus 4 is 11 points of piercing damage. Nice. Bitch uh, better say ow. <laughs> it's, it's hit. Uh, Valiant, you and the other figure tie. So real quick, I'm going to go. Uh, Mist, you see a uh, spiritual weapon appear in front of you, and Moonbeam, uh, a, a regular weapon, goes after you. Uh, the regular weapon misses you with a five, Spiritual weapon is only a 13 plus 4, 17 miss. That'll hit me. Uh, you get clocked uh, for 7 hit points of damage. Uh, Valiant, you are up. All right. Valiant's going to strike again. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, 22 to hit. Hits. Uh, 13 points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Down goes the old guy. Uh, 13 is up next. Uh, 13 is up next. Quincy, you are still inside the store. You notice that Moonbeam is currently engaged with an individual you recognize as the female from earlier. And Mist is currently engaged with a spectral weapon. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, As a cleric, you know it's a spiritual weapon. It's being controlled by the chick. Right. And I'm going to run over and attack the female then with Moonbeam. Give me an acrobatics leap over the slumped body of the cleric in the doorway. Can I do athletics instead? Uh, no, nope, because you got to jump. Oh, okay, I rolled a 19, though, so that's okay. So 19. You uh, tuck your head so you don't crack your skull on the top. Leap okay. over. You are now out front of the old west-looking thing, and what do you want to do? I will attack the woman with my mace. Moonbeam or the other one? Uh, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how we roll. Depending on how I roll, exactly. All right. Um, 15 plus 2 for my bless, so that's going to be 17 plus 3, 20 to hit. Hit. All righty. A little damage. It is going to be three points of damage. Roll pretty low, unfortunately. Yes, you did. Uh, two. Moonbeam. Uh, this psycho bitch is hitting you. Chick mm. fight! <laughs> pet fight! Pet fight! Because we're all misogynist pigs. Right. Yep, I roll 12. Uh, 12 rings off her leather tunic. Is that uh, with the 4? Is that with the D4? Oh, yeah, that's right. Did you, you add the 4? You yeah. can add a D4 if you want. Oh. And even Might make a difference. One, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. it's only 13, so you will hit even if you roll a 1 on it. Okay, then. So nice. that'd be damage. Uh... <laughs> Next time, Frank, you got to make that sheet bigger. Yeah, because I'm old. Fastcharacter.com, increase your font size. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Six. 
still alive. Top of the order, Mist, uh, you are dealing with this spectral force. Um, yeah. By the way, there's a crowd gathering around. Uh, they were pretty pissed there wasn't a fight earlier. Oh, well, they're going to get one now. They're getting one now. Um, I'm going to move up on that dude that was going for Moonbeam there mm -hmm. and stick my poison dagger in him. Sure. Yes. Good place for it. He, yeah. He's had it since he was dealing with the Kenku. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting ready. Uh, 21 to hit. That hits. Eight points of piercing damage. Nice. Uh, that hurts. I got a 19 on my save, though. Uh, okay, you'll take half from the... Or no, you take nothing from the poison if you save. Okay. Uh, 18. Uh, the spiritual weapon is going to go for miss. 15 plus 4 is 19. Uh, 18 plus 4 is 15 on Moonbeam. It's the damage for D8 plus one. Nine max damage missed. Uh, Motherfucker. Tracy. Mist is drinking a healing potion. Okay. I was going to run up beam. and touch Mist. <laughs> it wasn't the case. I just got those nine back. Hey. I, I can, I'm still leaking. I need help. Terribly. Okay. What's your AC? Um, it is 15. I miss. Oh. Uh, Valiant, you tied me. You're up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as an action, Valiant is going to channel Divinity, uh, <sighs> casting... Uh, uh, la, 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 la. What do they call it? Uh yeah commanding presence <laughs> and it uh they're gonna have to do a wisdom save 16. 19 on the die so oh 19 plus 1 20 dirty it's that scene from superman <laughs> too you know now before it's on <laughs> but nothing <Snap>. <laughs> uh quincy time to shine Alrighty, I am going to drop my channel divinity to preserve life. I'm going to give Moonbeam back 15 hit points. Nice. Thank Moonbeam, you. Time to be the hero or heroine or marijuana or drug of choice. Uh, you're up. Uh, your assailant is not looking good at all. Her. All right, I'm rolling him at the big die. Nice. Which is 16. Hits. Yay. And then... Can you kill her? Well, probably not, but we'll try. Correct answer is five. Four. <laughs> That's uh, harsh. That hurts me. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. Uh, you know what? And I, I said it out loud before, so we all know I'm not full of shit. Uh, Miss That's four D less than she had, though. So, Miss D12 against me. Hells yeah. Where's it at? There it is. Uh, that is a nine. Fight on, Mist. Uh, do the coup de gras on this chick. I was just say she only has one point left, right? Stanky bonks. But if he misses, she gets oh, to attack. He's I hit her. Miss. No problem. Yeah. Uh, Fourteen plus six is a twenty. Dirty. Yeah. One, one hit point <clears throat> left. Well, well, then she's dead because I hit her for five. Nice. Yes. Uh, the least I can do. Just like uh, Tombstone, everybody starts to stream in, uh, taking a look at you guys. Uh, the fight is over. What do you guys want to do now first? I'm going to pose <clears throat> for the crowd, of course. Yes. Okay. And Valiant is standing back to back with him. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mace out. Maul out. Uh, 
Yeah, I bet your mace is out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Mist and Moonbeam, what are you guys doing? Fear not, brave people of whatever the fuck this town is. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> bum fuck. No. I'm just... Yeah, I'm down. hanging back because. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there's bodies to loot and things. Right. So... Yeah. That's uh, why we're doing it, so they can loot the bodies. We're commanding <laughs> the presence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mist, who are you looting? Um, that chick I just stuck a knife into. Moonbeam, who are you looting? Who's closest? Uh, the other dead cleric in the doorway. There you go. You right. find the red, irregularly shaped gem on uh, the old guy. Here is the big sticking point. Everybody rolls a d20. If you are the highest roll, including me, uh, your religion, their elder arrives first and takes credit for the victory. If it's me, Garnet Chick is the winner. Oh, fuck her. Straight up, <laughs> D20. 13. Oh, 13. 12. 13. Tied. Quincy and Mist. I've got a 17. Damn it. Yes. And I only had a seven, so way to pull it out, Mist. Uh, Mist, uh, your agnostic views Tabaxies. <laughs> Tabaxies. have uh, alerted the attention of the guards who walk up and go, uh, got any more of them weird gem-looking things? <laughs> <laughs> and they will nice. take the they will take possession of the red irregularly shaped gem and turn it over to the council of elders As one member be. from each religion uh so no one gets to carry the flag of victory but you have all lived you have all survived and uh who wants to d12 to see if you guys if the council of elders gets the gemstone in there before the volcano blows its stack. Oh, Dave? Uh, no pressure. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're you're letting Dave do it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you All right. I've never seen a volcano erupt before. Oh, seven. Nine. Damn. <laughs> Uh, the Council of Elders will go ahead and get real adventurers uh, to go ahead and <laughs> wow, really? turn the irregularly shaped gem. Uh, the lady eating the cheese sandwich is a master criminal. She will lead them up the mountain. <laughs> nice. Uh, folks, this is not what the published uh, scenario is going to look like, clearly. But uh, Valiant's going to hang out at God. the Temple of Soon. <laughs> what brother and He's going to get his armor polished. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. In more uh, ways than one. <laughs> <hell yeah. laughs> David, what would you think? I enjoyed it. This was a fun crew. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> what, what was not to like, you know? Right. You were victorious, so uh, that works. Kevin, what'd you think? Oh, awesome stuff. I was glad to come back. So much fun. We're glad to have you. you. One more for the flag, baby. One more, man. Rob, what'd you think? Awesome. Enjoyed the hell out of it. Nice. And Especially the cheese. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I'm seeing Mama, throw Mama from the train. (laughs) Uh, Carrie, what'd you think? I'm just sad I have to deal with the puppies all the time, so, you know, it was good. But I missed part of it. Yeah, very good. Uh, Kevin, well, you know what? Uh, missing a part doesn't mean anything because we do have an archive. That's true. <laughs> Uh, Kevin, pitch your uh, podcast one more time for us. Please. Sure, yeah. We are the Game Night Heroes. Uh, game Night, like Knights of the Roundtable Heroes. We're on a bunch of different streaming platforms. You can also find us at GameNightHeroes.com. If you want to find out anything about me, I'm at Kev Ran Games on Twitter and other places, too. But we're just a cool story-driven RPG cast. We're currently playing in Green Ronin Publishing's Freeport. We actually just... Uh, this week we actually partnered with them so they're actually going to be helping us get some stuff out to you guys so we're really excited about congratulations. that congratulations yeah so thanks right. really really well cool done. stuff yeah we're excited about it so folks follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to shoot the shit with us about D, join our discord if you want to buy our cool crap the link is down there we got weird shit to buy <laughs> uh Thank you to Pirate Dog Dice for dice that do not suck at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Don't forget oddfishgames.com, maker of Adventure Sense, and the Shine System so you can write much more gooder. Uh, We'd like to thank everybody for playing tonight. Thanks, uh, Kevin, for 
helping us out of a pinch. Uh, folks, tomorrow, Margu campaign. Yeah, those crazy bastards are going back to the mountains. Jackasses. Uh, that'll be about 4.15 p.m.-ish. Uh, check out Kevin's podcast on Tuesday nights. Uh, and check us out tomorrow uh, if you're bored shitless. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. Let's give them the dating game kiss and wave. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Uh, muted. Done.